I'm going to tell you what yarn I used and how much I cast on and the method I used to knit these socks. So uh, stay tuned. Hi everybody, I'm Sharon and this is episode 335 of the Knit Style Podcast. So today um, I have a bunch of yarn over here that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to talk about that and um, we're going to talk about what I've been knitting and I am going to show you my favorite, favorite thing that I have knit in 2024, probably in 2023 as well. So stay tuned for that. So. I hope everybody's doing well. 2024 has started off better. Rich and I, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we had a horrible 2023. You can watch last, the last episode to find out what the heck happened with our family. It was insane. Our son had brain surgery. <laughs> our son's back at work. He's doing awesome. I'm so proud of him. And he's back to his normal self. I'm thrilled. He has had no ill effects from his brain surgery where he had a very large benign tumor removed. It's called a meningioma. Uh, Rich and I both had nasty diagnoses in 2023. Um, we're fine. Uh, we're fine. Mine is doing well. If you want to find out about mine, you can go on Instagram. There is a, a highlight under my Instagram name, Knit Style, um, where I talked about it. It's called LADA. You can look that up if you want to know more about it. And it's great. I'm doing great. Um, my husband, he's going to come on, I'm thinking in about a month, and he's going to talk to you about his really scary health scare. And he's doing amazing. He's all better. <laughs> and it's a wild story. So we're having a better start to 2024. Rich and I went on a cruise. We had a fantastic time. Um, we went on a Disney cruise. We went on the Disney Fantasy. And we went to Cozumel. Um, Cozumel, Grand Cayman, and Jamaica. Falmouth, Jamaica. And it was a beautiful, beautiful cruise. The weather was fantastic. Gorgeous, gorgeous weather. Um, we had some wonderful meals. I can't drink anymore, but it's fine. <laughs> I don't even mind. I had some great food. Um, and I did a little snorkeling on Disney's private island, and that was super fun. I'll put some footage of that in here. Right here, if you want to see. I took this footage. <laughs> with my phone. It's not great footage because you can only control your phone above the water. So I ha would have to start it while I was above the water and then, you know, I would start to snorkel and I had some, I had some that did a, um, a time lapse when I, what, I didn't want it to do a time lapse because it kept pushing buttons. I don't know. Anyway, I have a little bit of footage of that. And you can find, you can snorkel and find these Mickey statues and mini statues and other Disney statues under there. It's super fun. Lots of fish. However, it is so far to swim out there. It's so far. I can't even explain to you how far, but far. And I'm, I can swim. I'm not a great swimmer. Um, I mean, they provide you with life vests. I had fins. It takes you 20 minutes, or took me. <laughs> I'm slow. It took me 20 minutes to swim out there. 
and then you know due to my health condition I have to be careful I can't do I can't do too much physical activity or my blood sugar go drops and it gets crazy so I had to be really careful so I I swam out 20 minutes and I could only really snorkel for like another 10 to 20 um, they do have a rope and I was pulling myself back in and I asked the lifeguard, am I allowed to pull myself back in with this rope? And she said, oh yeah, yeah, no problem. So next time I do it, I'll use the rope, which will make it easier. Um, yeah, so that, that was fun though. I'm into that. Like I love snorkeling. So wherever we went on the cruise, I, I'm, I'm a horrible person. I don't really care about what's on land. I just wanna know what's under the water. So in Grand Cayman, we took a Nautilus tour, you know, one of those submarines. It was okay. It wasn't, I did it once, you know, due, due to Richie's health conditions, he didn't want to snorkel. So we just figured, let's try this. We'll do this. It, you stay dry. You don't have to swim. You see fish. It's fine. It's, you see some ship, shipwrecks. Um, but I want my face in the water. <laughs> Anyway, I'll put some footage of that in here too. That it was fun. It was it was it was really cool. I did it once. I don't have to do it again. I, I want to get my body in there in the water with my face in the water, looking at the fish. So, yeah. Anyway, so that's that's the deal. So I wanted to talk about the fear less giveaway that I talked about on the last show. Um, this was a fundraiser um, to celebrate Boston Jen's mom, and the proceeds went to the Blind Center of Nevada, much very worthy cause. And um, I did a raffle because I wasn't really able to promote it much because I traveled so much in, in February, and we raised about $300, which is awesome. And I did the drawing. And um, I have emailed you if you are a winner. So thank you so much for your um, donations. And um, yeah, you will have already heard from me if you won. Okay, so I did some dyeing this week. And what inspired me was Helen Stewart's Mystery Knit Along that is going to start on March 21st. And I wanted to get these skeins dyed up for this knit along. Um, I am not gonna knit this shawl because I have so many shawls and I have one on the needles that I really need to finish. This is called the 24 Birds Mystery Knit Along and it's inspired by William Morris Designs. And um, there's a lot of fabric on Spoonflower that is inspired by these designs. And I picked two um, to inspire me. You know, I, I picked a bunch, but I, I landed on two. And one is a spring palette and one is a more fall palette. So um, here is the first palette. So this is a spring palette. It calls for four skeins and I love how these came out. So, I mean, look at this green and this pink. Oh my goodness, so beautiful together. And this yellow and this pop of turquoise, which reminds me of Grand Cayman. So I'm probably gonna name this one Grand Cayman. <laughs> I'm probably going to name this one like Save the Bees or Honey Bees because it reminds me of honey and, um, you know, pretty pink petals. So, and I'll put a picture of the fabric up. I wish I had had more time or I would have had Donna I would have ordered fabric and had Donna make bags, but we just didn't have time. If you want, if you order one of these and you want a bag, let me know and um, Donna can order fabric if I get enough people interested. 
So, anyway, I have this beautiful um, tonal. These are tonal spring palette. And I also have a, um, oh, and this, this base is my regular sock base, my 7525. Um, this, that's what this palette is dyed with. And I had some singles yarns left. And I also had some merino cashmere nylon left. Um, I don't dye those bases anymore. I really only dye this base. But I had some. So I, I dyed I dyed up a pack, two packs of that. So this is the color I used. Um, these are the colors I used for these two bases. So this is the soft singles base. It's singles. It's lovely. It doesn't pill, which is weird. You would think a singles base would, but it doesn't. So when you knit it up, it gives you this really pretty halo. And this is the color. This is a more fall vibe with this beautiful rust which is um slutty squash really and this beautiful like orangey peachy and this has hints hints of gray but it's light and this one also has hints of gray and it's light i don't i don't really have names for these Yet this is this is slutty squash. Um, I'll come up with some names for them, but if you have any suggestions, leave them down below. But this is this is the singles base, as you can see, beautiful. And my merino cashmere nylon base, love this base again doesn't pill. It just leaves a nice halo. I just knit a sweater holding them together. Beautiful. Love. I love that sweater. So here's that base. And of course, this base is going to take the color a little bit different. But this is the Merino Cashmere base. And I have a limited quantity of these um, because they're you know, I didn't have that much, but I wanted to dye it up and get it out to you. Now, one of these MCNs came out very brown, so I'm going to discount this one. It's still beautiful, but it's definitely, I don't know if it's really showing on camera. This has more of a bright, yeah, see, this is more brown. So I'm going to discount this one a little. They're actually, all of these are going to be slightly discounted from my regular price since there's four skeins. So um, I'll give you a little discount since it's a kit. Now, it is a kit. However, the pattern is not included. You have always, when you buy a kit from me, unless I specify, the pattern is not included. <laughs> because I didn't write the pattern and I didn't hire someone to write the pattern. The pattern is on your own. So you just, if you would like to purchase yarn from me with my style of dyeing, that'd be awesome. But you have to buy the own, your own pattern. <laughs> then I was looking through my yarn stash of yarns that I've dyed and I came up with two more palettes that are more um, speckled. And they're so pretty. So I also have this palette, which I think is so cool. So what you need is you need like three and then a pop. So look how pretty. So this is Doggy Daycare, Birthday Girl, uh, garnet and kissable. 
So I'm going to put this up as a I'm going to put this this one up as you could purchase it as a as a set four together. And this one for those of you who like pretty warm oranges and yellows this this is crafty birds knit love yarn kissable and witchy purple would be your pop so pretty and all of these are limited quantities like I, i'm not even sure how much i have i mean it, if i run out and you want it let me know i'll dye more um, this is this is all in my 7525 sock base. The only base I have that's different is um, in this color, this fall palette. So I am pretty excited about that. A mystery shawl is so fun. Behind me, behold, Stephen West. That is his. Um, I don't, I think that two years ago. So fun. So many awesome techniques. I went rogue and did not use his border. I did my own border and it came out amazing. So, but Helen, she writes a fantastic mystery pattern. It is so fun. So if you're interested, all of this that I just showed you is in my shop right now. You can go over there and you can pick those up. And that is all the dyeing I have. Um, if you're interested in a bag, just email me, um, knitstyleyarns at gmail.com. If I get more than four people interested in bags, I'll have Donna order them, but it's gonna take a couple of weeks because she has to order it from Spoonflower and then sew them. So it's gonna take three weeks. So you're not going to have it for the start. So the knit along starts two weeks from today. So today is today's. I'm recording this on the seventh. These will be. Um, you'll see these on the ninth when this show posts, and then so two weeks from today it starts. So you'll have the yarn in plenty of time um, to cast on. For sure, because I'll get it out right away to you. Okay, so that's the shop update, shop news. And let's talk about what I've been knitting. Oh, let's talk about what I'm wearing. This is the sweater of my dreams. Look at this sweater. Isn't it gorgeous? So I had this knit for me. I sent the yarn out, and I'm not going to say her name because um i didn't i never asked her if i could share her name but anyway she loves to knit sweaters and she has too many so she offered to knit this for me because when i i cast this on and it hurt my hands because it's lopey and um i asked if someone would knit it for me and she emailed me and said she would and oh my goodness you guys look at this sweater look how perfect this is nicer and better fitting than I have ever knit myself. <laughs> she did a beautiful job. Incredible. So um, this is Stroker by Isolde Teague. It is knit with um, Let Lopi. And it's grays, blacks, whites. And my friend Susan who I get together and knit with, we split some lopi. I placed an order and we shared the order. And um, she's gonna knit one too. So she can knit with lopi. It wasn't bothering her hands. She knit a whole shawl with lopi and it was beautiful. And she actually went to Iceland and was loved the sweaters that were there. And she was inspired. She wanted she wanted one. And now I have one that I didn't have to knit. 
<laughs> and that's amazing. And um, she's excited to cast hers on. I was over there the other day. I, I wore it over there, and she fell in love with it. And she is a black and white girl, black, white, and gray. She loves that. And that's why we chose this palette. And that's perfectly fine with me because I'm a neutral girl. I love neutral colors, especially for sweaters. So that's what I'm wearing. And I am thrilled. You know who you are. I know you're watching. You knit this for me. And it is fabulous. Fabulous. Love. Okay. So what I've been knitting, I worked a little bit on my sweater. This is Sweater Hug by Skein Deer. Isn't it beautiful? I finished one sleeve and I kind of went rogue with this sleeve. I think I'm going to have to rip it back because I, I stopped decreasing because I didn't want it to be too tight. And I think it might be a little big. Yeah, I think I may have to do some more, a few more decreases. This sleeve is perfect. So I kind of want it like that. Look at that. It's perfect. The length, and I don't like it too long either. So I think I might rip this back and do a little, do some more decreases. Um, so we're working on her. It's, you know, it won't be done for this season, but for next fall, I'll wear this to Rhinebeck and I will be very cozy in it because it's beautiful. Oh, the yarn is Loop in her worsted. This is the yarn. I got it on sale, 50% off. I love it. It is um, Loop Artisanal Mill Spun Yarn, worsted, 100% extra fine merino in a um, worsted, yeah, beautiful yarn. Love it. Loop is, has beautiful um, natural fibers, and I will be buying more. I have some yin yang that I want to cast on that I bought from her, but I've been knitting other things. So when I was away on vacation, I always start a new sock. It's like a thing. When I'm on a plane, I want to start a new sock, like a new color, you know, a new brand new pair. But I've been traveling a lot lately and I had four single socks. <laughs> I showed you those last time. Ridiculous. And I said to myself, Cher, you are not doing that. You're not starting a new sock. You have four unfinished pairs of socks. Just cast on the second socks already. So that's what I did. So this is one of them. This is the finished. Here's the finished socks. They're done. The first pair. <laughs> I could just wear these. So this is mustache. I, this is my favorite self-striping yarn. And I actually cast on the mates to both of these. So I'm almost, to, eh, not really almost to the heel. We're getting there. So here, I'm, I'm a top-down girl. I always knit top-down socks. So this one. This is in the campfire color. Love it. I, fall, beautiful, I started it in the fall because I couldn't resist this beautiful fall color. This one's been on the needles for a while, but to be fair, I had to frog the first one because I used the wrong size needle. Um, this is Lego Batman. I love this color. Black with pops. Oh. So these are gonna get done. These are kind of like my, right now, I, I worked on them while I was away, both of them. And then um, Lego Batman is in my purse. And this one's next to my chair at night when I just wanna knit in the room. 
I would be more, I would have more progress on these socks, except I fell down the rabbit hole of a different type of sock knitting. So here we are to the title of this episode. I entitled this episode, How I Knit Warmer Socks. Now, I have a condition called Renard's disease. Some of you may have that. And what happens is it's an autoimmune disease. I'm a mess. My body just is attacking itself. It's ridiculous. But um, so my hands and my feet get very cold. And no matter how warm I am, no matter how warm my home is or you know, how warm my environment is, my hands and feet are always cold. So I, I always have gloves or mittens on when I'm outside this time of year. And um, I always wear wool, so wool socks. But regular wool socks are fine if I'm out and about wearing sneakers and, you know, shopping or running or doing whatever. They're, those are fine. But when I'm home in my house, my feet just freeze. So, um... I, in the past, I knit some warmer socks with fingering weight held together with uh, mohair. And those were fine, except I don't think I knit them at a tight enough gauge. And I, I got holes in them. <laughs> so I wear, my socks wear out right on the heel. I have a pair on. I'm, I'm going to show you. It's embarrassing. These are... I don't know if I'm going to darn these or not, but see, that's where I wear my sock out. And I think it's just because I'm, I'm knitting them at a looser gauge. Um, and I just wear them to death. So I had some DK in my stash. Um, this is Woolens and Nosh. DK base, and this colorway is, um, this is the way, which is a Mandalorian reference. I think I've shown these on the show before. Well, I decided while I was on vacation, I was going to finish these. I was going to knit these up. And I pretty much finished one and started the second one. And then when I got home, I'm like, I want these. <laughs> I'm a process knitter. I can go and leave a project on the needles for a long time. I will eventually finish everything, but these I wanted them. So these I, I really focused and finished. Look at how beautiful. So this is Wounds and Nosh. Let me see if I have the... Oh, I think this is it. This is... Okay. So the base is... Um, a 90% superwash Targi, 10% nylon, 308 yards, 100 grams, um, and it's a DK weight, Wounds and Nosh. And I put these on, and I don't want to, I just don't want to take them off. So, I'm going to tell you how I knit these. So this is a DK base, and I think I might try knitting. I have, I dyed DK yarn as well. It's my 7525 um, Superwash Merino Nylon. I may knit up some DK weight socks in the base that I dye with mohair, but I like this because it's more of a woolly wool, which is slightly warmer, I think. Um, so this is Woolens and Nosh DK. Um, held together with just, this is gray mohair. I dyed it a light gray. Um, so this is what I did. I used a size four needle. Now I'm a loose knitter, so your needle size may vary. Okay. Top down, I cast on 40 stitches. I knit um, two by two rib for 12 rounds. Then I switched to stockinette and I knit 
the leg. The leg is pretty, it's a pretty long leg. It's probably almost seven inches because I like a nice tall sock because my ankles get cold. <laughs> so um, I'm looking for, oh, here's a ruler right here. I can tell you, hold on. This is, yeah, seven inches. So I have a seven inch cuff, but you can make it any size you want. Seven inches from top to the heel. Then I do a fish lips kiss heel, which is a dollar on Ravelry. Don't let it scare you. You don't have to do all that weird measuring with your foot. You can. That's more for if you want to knit fish lips kiss toe up. I don't like toe up socks because the bind off for me is too tight. I use a, oh, the cast on that I use is the German twisted cast on, which I have a tutorial for on my channel. Um, I have it as a short and I think I have it in a video and there's lots of tutorials for the German twisted cast on, but that's why I like top down socks. So top down, I knit about a seven inch cuff. And then I do fish lips, kiss, heel, easy, fits me great. And what I did was I held it together three strands for the heel. I, I held together the mohair, the yarn, which is this right here, and a lovely listener, Danielle, sent me this about a year or so ago. She was so nice. Danielle Boots sent me these um, reinforcing Regia two-ply nylon reinforcing thread. And she sent me two of them. And I'm, I knit one pair and I have a second pair on the needles. And I still have a lot left, even from the first one. So anyway, I hold three strands, the mohair, this reinforcing, and then the yarn together for the heel. So I'll let you know how it wears. Because I've been wearing these nonstop. Okay, so I hold it together for the heel, and then I drop this um, when the heel is finished. And then after the heel turn, I knit another. Okay, I have big feet. And I like my socks to be, I don't like them tight in the toes. So I knit about a six inch, about six inches, and then I start the toe. Um, and then for these, I usually make a nice pointy toe because I've, the way my toes are, they're, it's kind of pointy. But so 40 stitches and then I decrease it down. I do a classic toe where you decrease every other round for the toe until you get to 50% of the stitches and then decrease every round until you get to 50% of that. So 40 stitches, I decrease um, until I get to 20. And then I decrease, actually I, for these, I decreased till I got to 18. And then I decreased every round until I got to eight. So I went rogue on that a little bit. And then I made a, a bigger toe box and I like them. They, they just give it a little more room. So if I, if I take it off here. See, it's a little bit round. I did a, a little bit of more of a rounder toe than I normally do. You know, if you compare it to this, I probably decrease down to six. Yeah. So this this one's pointier than this one, and I like this one a little bit better. So I'm in love with them. They're incredible. They're so nice. So I finished them and I said to myself, well, you need to wash them. 
after wearing them, so I need another pair. This is Wollens and Nosh DK weight, and it's a coffee themed color. And I held it together with some white mohair. And I just finished the heel last night of the first one. So that's that. And I'm going to finish, I'm going to just keep knitting these until they're done. It, this took me about four days. It goes fast because it's thick, you know, and I only knit at night. I only, I start, I only start knitting like at nine o'clock because I'm busy all day. So I don't, I don't have that much knitting time. So I'm working on these. Um, this is what I have left over from the first pair, which is about 40 grams. So when I'm done with these, I will have enough to knit an, a third pair. I'll just combine these two colors, which are similar. I'm obsessed. I'm up. I'm completely obsessed with these socks because they're just they're just so nice for my feet. Oh my goodness. They feel they feel great. So, I've decided I really only want to knit them with DK. So I have some Woolens and Nosh fingering weight that I'm not going to use because I'd rather use the DK because they're, I think I can knit it a little bit tighter. Um, so I'm going to de-stash um, my fingering weight <clears throat> Woolens and Nosh and I'm going to buy some more. DK. <laughs> so I have this one. So if you go to my website and scroll down, I have a D stash section and the, these will be in the D stash. So I have this Hawaiian shirt and I have this mini to go with it. Even though this doesn't have purple in it, it still coordinates. This is beautiful. Yeah, this is, this is fingering. I love it, but I really want the DK, so I'm de-stashing this. I hate to let it go because it's really pretty, but anyway. This is Costume Party, that purple. Oh my god, I love it. And then this is, is a similar base. It's from Knit Spin Farm. And this actually has a little more yardage to it. It's 466 yard yards. Um, Michelle's is 411. Um, this is beautiful. It's called Queen of the Barn. And again, it's 90% superwash targi, 10% nylon. And this is four ounces, whereas these are 3.5. And I'll include this mini with it. So, again, I have these de-stashed, so go, there's only one of each, so if you're interested, run to my website and grab those, and then I can use that money and buy some DK <laughs> from Michelle. <laughs> so there's my sock talk for the week. <laughs> I don't have a Brooklyn accent, so it's not sock talk, it's sock talk with my upstate New York accent. <laughs> so I'm going to put these back on my feet because they're starting to get cold. <laughs> I hope that you all have a great week. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with some more beautiful yarn that I have dyed, um, experimenting with some new dye techniques. It's super fun. And I will see you then. Knit something beautiful and cheers.